let's get into it soul not for sale podcast joe rogan is getting called out by donnell rawlings on the podcast and it's in regards to the hollywood parties that everybody knows about or all of a sudden knows nothing about that diddy was involved in with this whole wild case so i'm going to be showing you that clip then i'm going to be showing you a, a, a statement from diddy's lawyer Okay, everything that Diddy has uh, has has to say about this whole thing. And then I'm going to show you another clip from Joe Rogan. And then we're just going deep into the case. I'm showing you some mainstream media stuff. I'm showing you people who are making allegations. Candace Owens weighs in on this. Uh, and then I'm going to be showing you some allegations involving Cuba Gooding Jr., 50 Cent's baby mother mind-blowing i didn't know that was a thing then we're going to be showing you something called flavor camp diddy had something called flavor camp that he put usher the r&b singer in and i think he might have also put justin beaver in something like that as well then i'm going to be showing you just some weird instances with p diddy 50 cents gonna comment on him a lot of footage of him just being odd and then we're gonna end it off with suge knight giving diddy a message a message that he might get Epstein at some point, which I think is very true. Let's get right into it. Don't forget about IamCoachColin.com. Check it out. Discount code IamCoachColin. All capital letters, all one word, one L in the name, Colin. Let's get to this first. Exists for us anymore. No, like in comedy just... Hollywood, like comedy Hollywood. Comedy Hollywood is a ghost town. It's not there anymore. You, ex you are an example. And there's a lot of other examples of you can literally make Hollywood wherever the fuck want to make Hollywood but it's you not even on. it's the not only reason you want to be Hollywood, Hollywood now all, is for the parties yo and nobody's going to those parties anymore no. you gotta tell them no <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot. it's hard not to think about it but there's a lot of people that that's not just that's not just in the case with Diddy it's not like this shit that's happening with him right now this shit been going on in Hollywood forever I'm not saying it's right but at some point you gotta say no you, that, that's the simplest thing to tell somebody the best vice. All right, this guy's get ready to bring a baseball bat sticking his ass with a, a line of cocaine. What are you going to tell him? You got to tell him no. Bro, that's some next level shit. What, the, what, the parties? And, yeah. It's not. Joe, you don't know about the parties, Joe. I don't go to those parties. I didn't say if you fucking went to the parties. I said, do. I hear rumors. I Joe, hear whispers. Joe. You don't know about these parties. You don't know about these parties. You don't know about the parties when a motherfucker come up to you, you with your girlfriend, and they like, I like both of you. You don't know about these parties? You no. never heard about these parties? No. You never heard about, you never had anybody come up to you and, and they say shit like this, Joe? So we think you're cute. We. Get it? You never heard no. about these parties, Joe? Now the question is, how many of them are out there? And do you think that's a Hollywood thing? Uh, I think that it's definitely more prevalent in Hollywood than in like Oklahoma, but I'm pretty so sure these type of parties and things exist. The bottom line, man, just deviance. It's just deviance. Yeah. And guess what we want to do for the most, for the most part of our life, Joe. You know who we want to dance with? The devil. <sighs> most people have more fun with the devil than with God. Hmm. God is the party pooper. Is this the part where you announce the opening of your new church? You know what, Joe? <laughs> Joe, I, listen, you might not agree with this, but no, I thought I about I want to go. I'm not saying I want right? to be a pastor. You could do it. I'll get it. Yo. Now, this is my question to you guys. Do you think Joe knows about these parties? I got to say, I don't feed into the conspiracies of Joe being a part of the CIA or anything like that. I don't give into that. But do I think he knows about these parties? He's almost 60 and he's been in show business since he was 21 years old. And when he was 21 years old, he looked like an Italian model. What? Of course he knows. There's no way he doesn't know about those parties. In fact, there was an episode where he said that him and Dave Chappelle went to one of those parties. And it was Naomi Campbell's birthday party. And there was a 40-foot picture of her naked. And there was all these crazy celebrities there. And it was him and Dave Chappelle. And they were barbecued out of their minds. Of course he knows about these parties. How, how do you not? How do you go? I, I know so much about this show. Okay, like I'm, I'm, I know I'm a JRE geek, but how do you go to a resort and and bump into RFK 
and you don't know about Hollywood parties. You just bumped into R. Have you guys? Have you ever bumped into RFK? I've never bumped into RFK. How do you get on a plane and you're on a plane sitting next to Norm Macdonald twice? Has that ever happened to any of you? Rest in peace. That's never happened to me. I've never been sitting around and just bumping into this person. I've never been at a bar. You know, one time he said he was at a bar with some archaeology or some scientist guy. And he saw, what was it? Uh, I forget. It was a super, I think it was Slash. It was some, someone super famous. And he just saw him there. That, that, that never happens to me. I don't know about any of you guys. He was hanging out with Tucker Carlson a few weeks ago. I'm saying, you know, Tucker may not be a part of these things because he's, you know, he's in media. But this guy knows about these parties. No one's going to convince me otherwise. Of course he knows about the parties. Are you kidding me right now? I can't even believe this. I hear rumors. I wonder. I would love to hear the rumors that you hear. Because I've been hearing rumors about this whole Diddy thing for at least 15 years. Maybe 16 years. And I'm nowhere near Hollywood. So I would love to hear somebody who's actually living in L.A. for most of their life what they would actually hear. My buddy was in L.A. for six months. And he said he stumbled onto a party. It was one of those. I think it was one of those parties. And he said a lot of the people looked like vampires. He was like, ah, they just really looked like vampires. And they had this vampire feel to them. And then he left. He's a solid dude, so I believe him, but ain't no way Joe doesn't know about those parties. But you let me know what you think in the comment section. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's get into this statement from Diddy's lawyer. This statement from Combs' attorney, Aaron Dyer. This statement reads, and it was from yesterday, it says, quote, Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military-level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. This unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There has been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. A lot of things to break down in this one. Number one, yes, he hasn't. Now, I know you're like, hey, I couldn't see that. I couldn't see it. I, I want to see it. I, I understand that you couldn't see it. But listen, it wasn't the point for you to see it. It was just the point that if this video ever by chance gets seen by anybody who's in a position to talk to that attorney, I played the statement and Diddy has not been arrested for anything. But when you get raided by Homeland Security, listen, there's been a lot of rappers who go down for certain things. And when these type of organizations act, they're not doing it on a couple days notice. Oh, we're going to Diddy? Well, who's this Diddy guy? No, oh, we're going tomorrow? It's not like that. This is this stuff's planned months in advance. And it's because they're building up a case. And they're making sure that the case is ironclad enough that if anybody tries to dispute why they were there, they're just going to get a whole fistful of information. Like, we have this. We have this. We have wiretaps. We have this. We have this. We have this. So... I think they don't come like that unless they got something going. You know what I mean? These aren't regular police. This was Homeland Security. Let's play a second Joe Rogan clip for you guys. Joey Diaz and Joe Rogan talking about these whole rumors, and neither of them seem like they want to be talking about this stuff. And then we'll get deeper into the case. Let's go. Rumors are that Diddy was running some kind of Epstein type deal where he was filming everybody, right? That's the rumors. Yeah, I don't know that there's any proof or anything other than that. The thing is, like, we're getting the rumors from the internet, and the, the internet thinks that the Taliban took out that bridge in Baltimore. So it's like, who fucking knows? Who knows what's real? That's what Diddy's lawyers, I think, said. It was like, yeah, these are just trumped up charges. Not trumped up. I don't think they said that, but like like bullshit charges. Dude, when Homeland Security invades your house. You got problems. With dudes with fucking guns and body armor. There's Forget, Someone said that they weren't there to take stuff. They were there to delete everything. Like the real people that were in there, you know. Oh, like that's funny. With Epstein. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Of course. There's layers upon layers. <laughs> when you get into these fucking conspiracy theories, man, they, they never end. They never end. There's just layers upon layers upon layers. It's fun to talk about. It is fun to talk about. It's hard to know what's true. But yeah. why, people genuinely love it when someone like Diddy gets caught, though. The glee that people have is weird. Why? Because he's too successful. 
also it's like there was always so much east coast west coast shit that's still like in the zeitgeist you know like with biggie and tupac and they're all hating at each other and they both got killed and there was a lot going on and then there's people that thought that puffy was involved and shook knight was involved of, i think shook knight's the one who said that thing i just thought of what thing <clears throat> about that they were there to delete stuff <laughs> well if he really was filming everybody I mean, he had a lot of people at those parties, right? You know who said <laughs> Luke from Two Live Crew? Yeah, he said he was to leave early. Yeah. Like, <laughs> when Luke from Two Live Crew is leaving early, like you got a wild party. <laughs> what, what if what's happening is too fucked up for for Luke from Two Live Crew? Like, check please. There's so many different stories. Who knows? What are you gonna do? I'm not doing. Nothing. We're not involved in them. Not I was never at Diddy's party. I don't even know the motherfucker. We're out I don't want to know nobody. Telling jokes. Nobody. Telling jokes. Like I told you, having fun. That's it. Yeah. Smoking dope, cracking jokes, making people. That's everything it. Everything else is background music. And living in LA, you have all this shit that's going on around mm -hmm. you. That's what I. You know, you have your life, and then you have all this shit that goes in and out of your ears all fucking day. And you're like, I just want to do stand up. You also have those uh, those celebrity environments where celebrities all get together, and there's so many of them. You know, and these wild parties. And if you got a wild party and P. Diddy puts on that wild party and, you know, he sets everybody up. Like if you were an intelligence agent, you know, like a Jeffrey Epstein type deal, that'd be the way to do it. Big old crazy party. Get everybody loose. And get the cameras Get them the yayo. Get them the yayo. And everything else. Get them little, everything you need. Get fired up. Get those cameras rolling. And now you got everybody under wraps. What a twisted web some folks weave. <laughs> they're they're real real quiet about this whole thing they're just like joey diaz is like i'm not even commenting on this i don't have much to say joe's just kind of tiptoeing around it he's calling it a conspiracy theory homeland security went to the guy's house we're we're out of like we're out of conspiracy theory land like let's not go there let's not this is not there's a whole case. There's somebody alleging a lot of things, right? But the thing about it is he's not the first person to allege this stuff. There have been people for years saying that he gets people to do things out of a power trip. He'll get a man to do things to him because he just wants to have that power over the guy. There's been so many things that have been alleged over the years. But back in the day, you would look at it and be like, oh, that guy's just a hater, Ah, it's just a hate. It's just a washed up rapper. That's all. He's just hating on him. Ah, you know. And it was like another person and another person and a producer and a this person and a that person. And now all of a sudden, somebody actually had the sense to be like, I'm I'm making a case out of this. And this case that erupted all of this, this wasn't even the first thing. The first thing actually was his girl. Uh, his ex-wife, I believe, but we'll get into that in a second. Let's play a little bit more of this case. What do you What do you think about Joe Rogan's reaction there? I think he knows about these parties. I'm not saying he goes to these parties, he's done anything, but I think he definitely knows about it. Definitely. I mean, if if Alex Jones told him about Epstein years before the Epstein stuff broke, you know, and he heard about Harvey years before the Harvey thing broke, he for sure has heard about this. He knows Dave Chappelle. He knows rappers. I'm, I'm just saying. All right, let's get into it. Little Jesse Waters here. Freak out parties. In attendance were celebrities, politicians, athletes, international dignitaries like British royalty, Prince Harry, and music label executives. Lil Ron claims some of the biggest names in the recording industry sponsored these parties with sex workers, drugs, and underage girls. The CEO of Universal Music, Lucian Grange is named as a defendant. So is the former CEO of Motown Records, Ethiopia, Habert Mariam, and others. Lil Rod says hidden cameras were in every room of Diddy's homes. Lil Rod believes that Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage of every person that has attended his freak-off parties and his house parties. Salacious tapes of Hollywood's biggest names including record CEOs and politicians doing drugs and cavorting with prostitutes and minors. The complaint argues that these freak-off parties were a business model. Young and up-and-coming talent attended and were promised career opportunities and access to music executives. They were then plied with drugs and alcohol, filmed. Some were blackmailed. 
There was a quid pro quo, according to the complaint. Lil Rod said not only were these music executives sponsoring these parties, they were handing Diddy large sums of cash that he used to pay for the sex workers and drugs. Something tells me the IRS is going to be interested. The suit. We'll see. We'll see. I think so as well. It's uh, it's not looking good. And if you're wondering, Jesse was bringing up someone named Little Rod. Little Rod is the person who decided that he was going to actually um, pursue this case. So he was the person that put it all into action. And again, this was only maybe weeks, not days, maybe weeks after his first I shouldn't say first wife, but his ex-wife made a claim saying that he did things of this nature. She was suing for something like $30 million. And we thought this was going to be this long drawn out case. And almost it was like less than 24 hours, maybe 24 hours. Did he just settled right away and paid her near? But you know, nobody can comment for sure, but paid her near $30 million. I don't know. It's a lot of money if you didn't do anything. You know what I mean? Here's a little bit more deeper into the case. We're learning a lot more about the massive federal sex trafficking raid at Diddy's homes in Miami and L.A. According to TMZ, the first thing the feds did once they got to Diddy's property was immediately disable his surveillance system and seize all his footage. And it wasn't just security footage they were after. Homeland Security also confiscated hard drives, phones and other electronics focusing on finding photos, emails, and names linking others to the alleged sex trafficking operation. These tactics straight out of the Epstein playbook. Seize the footage, but then what? Bury it? Blackmail with it? We don't know. Will anybody ever know what was on Diddy's cameras? And will this investigation lead to indictments that go higher up the food chain? And how high? Politicians, athletes, celebrities, music executives, all were recorded inside Diddy's parties. Officials say that Diddy's alleged victims have not been holding back during their interviews and are telling investigators everything. We'll keep you up to date on all of these details and more as soon as we hear them. Very, very interesting stuff. Now, um, I would think that they are doing something like that. Candace Owens actually weighed in and said the feds are currently raiding Diddy's house. They already knew what was up, what he was up to, but he is going to be the fall guy so they can protect the people who are at the top of the ring. They are raiding his home to hide evidence, not to find it. That's how this works. Candace Owens in her Tucker Carlson era right now, broken free from the Daily Wire. Very interesting that she's commenting on this. But I think they're right. I think this is very much like something with Epstein. There's very powerful people. And eventually you swing at the wrong person or you catch the wrong person on film and everything comes tumbling down. You know, when it comes to these house parties, Cat Williams, Cat Williams was there were people before on very smaller scales. Cat Williams was one of the first people, the first big star to mention what was going on with Diddy. And he said it when he was on stage. He uses the N word when he's talking about that. I can't do that here, although I am equipped to to use that word. Um, <laughs> he says he was walking inside Diddy's house and he was walking past the door and it was one of those wild parties. Cat Williams was at it and he walked by one of the doors and he pulled back and he looked and he said, do I see a dude kissing another dude? And then he actually mentioned who the dudes were. I forget what names he said, but he mentioned who the dudes were. Everybody went crazy. And that was some t that after that, it was a slow decay in his career. Then he started getting um, pursued by the powers that be. He started getting pushed and blackballed. It was some time after that because when he attended the party, he left. He didn't partake. He wasn't willing to play ball, quite literally. So. Once you do that, it's a problem. I think I don't think there's going to be any tapes found. I, I don't think anything's going to come of it. You know, 50 Cent's already put out a statement saying he's willing to pay top dollar for these tapes. And he has, a you know, a, a lot of millions of dollars in order to do that. But I don't think anybody's going to get to see it. I think it's way too risky. 
just like with it just like with epstein you think we're ever gonna know what epstein was doing ever never you think we're ever going to know who was really there? The list that we're never going to get a real list of actual clients that were partaking or see footage or anything like that. What would you, I, I've said this in another Epstein video I did. What would you do if you were this agency, you know, and you acquired all this film? Would you look at it and be like, we're going to take down this whole structure? Or would you look at it and be like, oh, I guess we control all these people now. Thanks, Diddy. Thanks, Jeffrey. You know, I, I don't know. I don't have much faith in them when it comes to that type of thing. Here, let's hear a little bit more about some odd allegations. Troubles. Just this week, both Diddy's homes in Miami and Los Angeles were raided by Homeland Security. According to former prosecutor Melba Pearson, they're likely looking for some specific evidence. The feds are doing raids at three different homes of P. Diddy, including his homes in California, in Florida, and in New York. And what I think they're looking for are videos. So basically, P. Diddy had a habit, allegedly based on told to us through the filings by uh, Cassie Ventura. They have all said that P. had a habit of liking to video either him abusing other people or in, you know forcing other people to abuse each other for his pleasure and how would record all of that. So I think those are some of the things that the feds are looking for. I think they're looking for other types of evidence to corroborate the statements that were made by Little Rod, by Cassie Ventura and the other people have come forward saying that he did abuse them. So they're looking for corroborating evidence and all the basically the building blocks to put together what will end up being a massive, massive, massive criminal case. So far, Diddy hasn't been arrested, but he has already faced his fair share of legal issues. Last year, Diddy's ex-girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura, who you probably know as singer Cassie, accused him of sex trafficking and sexual slavery. She it's wild wild and that was the woman i was just talking about she made these claims she put in her claim i believe it was 30 million dollars and he settled within 24 hours he settled very you know i shouldn't just say within 24 hours so confidently it was 24 to 48 hours it was lightning fast for this type of thing because you think we all thought when this happened oh this is gonna get thrown out there's no way that he's gonna pay any money why is he gonna pay that was his wife nope settled right away and then from there it was just a slow removal of him from every board and every ceo position from all the companies that he's a part of and that he started it just started looking really weird really bad and i have to say i wish i wrote this down i wish i recorded myself i said at least eight months ago that when people figure out the whole diddy story it's gonna look way worse than harvey weinstein that's exactly what i said I was, I, I've said that to many people, many, many people. I did not realize that it would look a lot like Jeffrey Epstein. That's for sure. Let's see some footage of the actual raid of one of his homes. Full story right now in the raid on Sean Diddy Combs, L.A. residence by federal agents. This is a story that we broke here on Fox 11. Mario Ramirez is outside of his Holmby Hills home right now with the latest developments for us. Good morning to you. Good morning. Quiet right now, but it was a chaotic scene with federal agents rushing into the home here behind me. There were two separate raids, one here in this upscale neighborhood, the other in Miami, both connected to a federal sex trafficking investigation. Take a look. Fox 11 was the first to show you the raid here locally, led by Homeland Security, heavily armored federal agents making their way into the home on Mapleton Drive, associated with rap mogul Sean Diddy Combs and his production company, Bad Boy Films. Dozens of agents searched the property for hours hours leaving with boxes of evidence a similar scene at the miami beach property listed in his name as well the properties raided in connection to a sex trafficking investigation although department of homeland security officials haven't named diddy as the focus the 54 year old has been at the center of several sexual assault and sex traffic uh, sex trafficking allegations in the last year that's something variety's executive music editor has been covering extensively listen been rumors like this for years, for decades, about this kind of behavior from him. Um, I don't know whether they're true or not. You know, yes, he could be an unpleasant person. That is, that is 
w widely available on video. A lot of really successful people can be. Um, innocent until proven guilty, one would hope. And you can see him here, this video from TMZ showing the hip-hop producer pacing outside of a customs office at a Miami airport after the properties were raided. And this was also after he was reportedly stopped and questioned by federal agents moments before coming back. Oh, he was trying to leave. He was trying to leave, man. He was like, I'm out of here. Let me just have this blow over. And, you know, honestly, it looks like the act of a guilty person. That's what I would say right off the top. But also... If I was famous, I'd be like, I have to leave because everywhere I go now, people are just going to be taking pictures of me. It's going to be, it's going to, I'm already P. Diddy. It's going to be ramped up to a thousand. So I would get, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd want to get out. You'd want to be like, I got, I got to leave. I got to go right away. Let's look into some more footage. This is live as the raid was happening. From Fox. And of course, we were watching this. We didn't know exactly what we were seeing at the time. So this is just a little bit ago as they, you can see a crowbar to get through this gate initially as well. The long guns and a multitude of people, as you'll see, they'll zoom out a little bit just to see the amount of force they are using to get inside this home. And of course, the complex in which this home sits is a very expansive one for the American rapper and producer. You can see them checking inside of a vehicle. We don't know exactly what is involved, if Diddy's even there. We don't know a ton of information about this at all, but this was dramatic video coming in of the Los Angeles home there, raided by Homeland Security. Some of those images there on the backs of them. We also saw uh, other images. I want to uh, kind of quickly move to what else we saw as people were led away, potentially in custody. Don't know who these individuals are, if they're related to Diddy in any way, but you can see them, a dramatic video from our Sky Fox team there in Los Angeles as we continue to cover this. And our Fox 11 team is there on the ground right now as we speak. Let's take you out to some of their coverage here as we follow this developing story out of Los Angeles and then detain those three people inside. We haven't seen any signs of P. Diddy himself. Again, we're hearing that he is possibly in New York, uh, but several people inside the home that uh, will surely be questioned. Uh, it's a very chaotic scene when all of this happened. Uh, lots of, um, of neighbors wondering what's going on, of course, and uh, we'll keep you updated, but it's definitely gonna be quite a scene here for the remainder of the day. When you see this number of law enforcement agencies coming together, making this type of raid to such a big, high-profile mansion like this, in a neighborhood like this as well, this is very thought out, methodical, planned out for days. So they base this on a number of information gathering that they've received and evidence or what they're looking for. So clearly, this is not something they do lightly. They really go th through the process of making sure that everything is ready before they conduct a raid like this. So yes, this took a lot of planning for all these multiple agencies to come together to actually now conduct a type of raid like this, as you're seeing right now with this street also uh, shut down for the time being, because Haley, you could see the perimeter has been set up in that neighborhood to keep just the public back from the work that's being done. And there you have the shot from Sky Fox. Again, these heavily armed vehicles I want one of those vehicles. That's what I want to drive around in. Those things are amazing. Yeah, I don't want no Lamborghini or nothing. Give me one of those things. Oh, perfect. With just a huge gas tank. You know what I mean? Bomb-proof, bulletproof, all that stuff. So we're going to need in the future, folks, I think. But a few dozen. I mean, we just saw tw like at least 12 go in there. So there has to be at least two dozen, two dozen people rushing this house one of three houses by the way wow absolutely and, and a stunning house by the way i have to say have to say i mean a, a gentleman like diddy of course he has good taste he wants the best of everything he wants cameras everywhere he wants the finest celebrities he wants to watch videos after i was also thinking as i was watching this that as this is happening i always look at celebrities like they're pets they're super elites and then celebrities that we see and that we're all taught to worship as false idols, those are pets. And it makes me wonder sometimes, I wonder what he did to have this happen to him. Because I don't think it was just random. I don't think it was a random just like, oh, one person. I, I don't think it happens like that. I think you step out of line 
and then they put you in line. They reel you in this way. That's just that's just me. And I just wonder what he did. Because I don't think that he's just operating as him alone blackmailing people. I think he is the person who's doing it and other people now have that blackmail. That that's 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 my first thought. Like I don't think again, like Candace Owen says, I don't think he's at the top of this thing. I think he's just the camera guy. He's basically the camera guy. He's the party guy. He's the, hey, everybody come in. Everybody do the things. But there are people up top who actually benefit from it way more. I don't know. I just wonder what he did. Let's get into it. We're going to get into this uh, little tidbit here. I believe this is the one about Cuba Gooden Jr. really quick. Very interesting. The fallout of this week's federal raids of Sean Diddy Combs' Los Angeles and Miami homes continue to stun the music industry. The search warrants were reportedly connected to a federal investigation in Manhattan related to allegations of sex trafficking, sexual assault, and solicitation and distribution of drugs and firearms. Diddy has been swimming in legal trouble since November when his ex-girlfriend filed a jaw-dropping lawsuit accusing him of sexual and physical abuse. That suit was settled quickly, a mere day after it was filed in federal court. But just last month, another federal lawsuit was filed against the embroiled hip-hop mogul and hitmaker when Rodney Jones, a.k.a. Lil Rod, filed suit against Diddy with some allegations that appeared similar to the claims in Cassie's lawsuit. Jones claims Diddy sexually harassed, drugged, and threatened him. And that's not all. The former producer and videographer for Diddy also claimed Diddy and his team were engaging in serious illegal activity, including sexual assault, drug trafficking, sex trafficking, soliciting sex workers, and providing lace drinks to minors. The suit continues to make headlines after an amended complaint added 25 pages and a new defendant, actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Jones claims Diddy was grooming him to pass off to his friends, which included Gooding. According to the suit in January 2023, Combs introduced Jones to Gooding while they were on the rapper's yacht in the Virgin Islands. Jones says Diddy suggested Gooding get to know Jones better, leaving the two men alone in the studio aboard the yacht. Once alone, Jones says Gooding sexually harassed and assaulted him. And Cuba Gooding Jr. wasn't the only high-profile name in Jones's amended complaint. Jones' lawsuit also named City Girl. Wow. Absolutely crazy. Cuba Gooding Jr. He has been uh, in some wild things via TMZ and people catching him doing crazy things. There was a some alleged things that he said to a woman that I can't even repeat. Like he, he's just been known to have some, a little wild, like he gets a little drunk apparently and, and gets into some wild behavior. So to hear this still surprising, I'm not going to be like no surprise here. I'm not like one of those people that acts like, Oh, I knew all this. No, 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 no. This is still surprising. It's just, it's just so wild to hear Cuba Gooden Jr. He said, show me the money. He was the guy that said, show me the money. He's famous. I don't understand how you're famous and you get caught up in stuff like this. I'm just saying. Like, if you want people who are, I don't know how to call it, uh, promiscuous, you know, professional promiscuous people, couldn't you just, don't you, you couldn't you just reach out to the finest and just do it? Like, why are you, what is this? It's so weird. So odd. I don't know, man. Whatever. Let's hear the next one. This actually has to do with 50 Cent's baby mother, which is really surprising to me. The cut, Young Miami confirmed she and Diddy were no longer together. Then there's OnlyFans model and actress Daphne Joy. She just so happens to be the mother of 50 Cent's son, one of Diddy's rivals. She and 50 Cent dated between 2011 and 2012. However, they reportedly broke up a few months after their son was born. Back in September of 2022, 50 Cent accused Joy of gallivanting with Diddy via Instagram. And that's not the only famous name Joy was linked to. She reportedly dated singer Jason Derulo after she and 50 Cent broke up, but split after six months. When Joy was named as one of the women who allegedly received a monthly stipend for sex work from Diddy, 50 Cent, whose real name is Curtis Jackson, trolled the OnlyFans model on Instagram with this post, which reads, I didn't know you was a sex worker, you little sex worker, LOL. Yo, this stuff is a movie. According to Us Weekly, 50 Cent is seeking sole custody of his son with Daphne Joy following her alleged involvement in the lawsuit. Since the allegation, Daphne Joy has denied involvement in the sex worker allegations, posting this to Instagram. She writes, I am deeply hurt by the lies in the Rodney Jones lawsuit. The claim that I'm a sex worker is 100% false and character assassination. I'm reti- That's what she says, but 
who knows who knows right right now 50 cent is pursuing full custody of the child that they had together which is understandable and i think he's gonna get it i mean it doesn't happen often but when one when the man's actually a millionaire and can provide a more stable situation and you actually are an only fans model and you are caught up in this promiscuous looking lifestyle you know it might happen which is sad but also you know understandable you got to make sure the kid's in the right place and it's it's i guess it's not always with the mother depending on what the mother's doing you know but also why would 50 cent get with a, again again you're famous you're famous go find a lady that owns a business and say hey i want to change your life like what are you what are you doing what do you do i always tell my friends to stay away from girls like that always i won't say what i call them but I say to my friends, stay away from girls like that. That's the PG version. Always. Get get with a get with a nice lady, nice respectable lady. I'll tell you, it'll it'll change your whole life. You know Cat Williams predicted this whole thing, right? We we all know Cat Williams predicted this whole thing. Let's listen to some Cat Williams stuff. I want no, you tell it. No, you No, the best. I want you to tell it. You really are the best. You proving it here today. <laughs> As much as I'm proving it, you proving it. You proving it. Um, yeah, that wasn't the thing. It wasn't, people say that. He lost $50 million. No, no, that's not even close to what happened to this dude. And until you understand what happened to the dude, you don't understand what happened. Like, no, not they offered him $50 million and he turned it down. Who gonna turn down $50 million? Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right, because uh, P. Diddy be wanting the body. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. Come I, on. I did. I did. Oh, See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can yeah, say yeah, I'm, I'm so freely. Can, 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 can I need another one? You, here, get you another Thank one. Thank you. Too, okay. Man, Cat Williams didn't hold back. He said, you got to tell P. Diddy no. It's very, very, very interesting, man, that Cat Williams brought that up. And he didn't just bring it up once in that whole thing. He brought it up uh, twice. Here, here's another one. I came in this business saying I was going to expose. When I talked about Michael Jackson, when I talked about R. Kelly, they canceled me for these things because why would you talk about another black dude? Race is not where the line is drawn. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side, period, period. All of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. But he, he made sure to say Diddy. He didn't even mention another name when he was discussing that. He made sure to say Diddy, like right up front. Very, very interesting, man. Again, there have been circulations of people talking about this guy for years, for years. And you used to be able to shoo it away as just nonsense. But I don't know, man. So, so, that's why I think, like, what happened? Who did he piss off that all of a sudden this happened to him? You know? it mu There must be, like, he must have tried to bite a hand that was feeding him something for all of this to come down the way it is or maybe it's just the hand of god like cat williams said it's god's side and the other side we don't care about the other side and the other side's going down you know that could be true too honestly you guys ever heard of flavor camp you ever heard of flavor camp this is usher the r&b singer talking about his time at diddy's flavor camp i know it sounds bad and guess what it is Sean Puffy comes for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> some Flavor Camp. Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's In the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, not really. I Come mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, and it was, <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and, say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say that. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim, Craig Mack. 
curious things taking place. He had Usher at 13 for a year. Where does that happen? First off, yeah, wild for Diddy to be doing something like that. Second off, terrible for this guy's parents to sign off on something like that. Could you imagine? Man, I just, I couldn't, I, I don't, I don't even like filming. I can't, I couldn't leave my kid with somebody like that. Just a guy? Just a guy. That's like I have a kid that's 13 and all of a sudden Drake comes. Drake's like, I want your kid for a year. I'd be like, what the hell are you, what are you talking about? You can talk to him in front of me for five minutes and then we're leaving. Like, what are you, what are you saying to me right now? And he saw the whole lifestyle. It wasn't like he was in a separate place or just he was there through everything. If they stayed up all night, he stayed up all night. Whatever they were doing, he was seeing. And how much did he partake in? It's, obviously, he's going to say nothing, but there's there's no. And even when Robin said, because I was Robin Howard Stern, even when Robert, Robin was like, you no, no one ever came to you and tried to. He's like, I didn't say that. <sighs> the guy's 13. But now we hear Justin Bieber, very, very similar to what Usher was through. And Usher is actually the person who found Justin Bieber and then arranged for Justin Bieber to be chilling with Puff. Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, like, like the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15-year-old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed to Usher. Usher. I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and yeah, and, um, and, and, yeah, and, and we're going to go full, buck full crazy. We're going crazy. What do you mean you're going buck full crazy? He's 13. What are you saying to me right now? You know what I mean? What's going on? What are you talking about? Could you imagine, you have a kid, and Diddy, Diddy, who the guy who's known to party and do wild things, says, oh, we got, I got him with me for the next 48 hours, we're going to go buck full. What are you talking about? And these are just, you know, like, this, this is not an accusation of any kind, this is just some weird stuff that people have been seeing for years with this guy. Here's 50 Cent talking about his experience uh, with Diddy. <laughs> 50 Cent, I think, is like Cat Williams. I don't think he's actually, you know, gone to these parties and, and gotten the uh, the treatment, the Diddy. I don't think he's received the Diddy here. The pop was like, yeah, like, first he was amping him to, to get style. Then he was like, yo, he's like, yo, so, yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like, we can just hang out. Nigga, we gotta, we gotta Hold kick that. it. This is Puff. Okay. He's telling me we gotta kick it and shit. And he was like, yo, why don't we, like, go shopping or some shit? I mean, like, I pay for it. And I was like, what the fuck this nigga just said? <laughs> I got the fuck away from him because I was like, this nigga like the fucking way. This nigga just tell me he'd take me shopping. <laughs> and this is, shit, this is shit that goes on. But this is a little fruit pile. Pop is a fruit pile. It's a fruit pile, trust me. You see these little weird ass pictures and shit like that out there? I'm just sitting out there for no reason. If you don't see accident pictures, you'll be like kissing it. Like that doesn't happen by accident. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm telling you. Yes, I'm telling you. Look, look. Later, you're going to find out a little shit that I'll be saying. Oh, man. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly what he says. He's like, you're going to find out the stuff that I'm saying is real. And we certainly found out. He did this interview years ago, and he's always been taking shots at Diddy, always accusing him of just being a little flamboyant, a little odd. And in that clip, he was talking about how Diddy actually offered to take him shopping as if he was uh, a female of sorts, because that's the kind of thing you offer to a, a lady. You want to impress a lady? Hey, I'll take you shopping. I'll buy you whatever you want. You don't do that with 50 Cent, who's 6'3 and 240 pounds. Like, what? That's not what you do. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't try and do that with 50 Cent. <laughs> but, uh, you know, something about this is a little off topic, but 50 Cent is like the black Trump. You know, he's learned a lot from Trump. You can tell. 
He's learned a lot. He has not. He's never disparaged Trump. He's never been saying anything bad. He's actually recently endorsed Trump. He said we need Trump back. He's like the black. He's like the black Trump. He's done a reality show just like Trump. He's been living this like you know starlet filled life, dating supermodels just like Trump. Made hundreds of millions of dollars, not quite billions like Trump, but he, he's he's very much like uh, the the hip hop's Trump basically. And before hip hop's, before he was hip hop's Trump, Trump was hip hop's Trump. In case you didn't know, uh, this is another video of Diddy, and this is just another weird video where he's just getting a little flamboyant. I got Mr. Lee, what, yeah, I love this drink. You you? I like yeah. when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, where you put my bag Daddy, yeah, I like Mr. when you when oh, you scrambling right and scraping no, for no, no, shit. No, 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 no. I, got I notes like that. Shit. You know, I'll be practicing. I got yeah. notes. Yeah, I love this drink. Where you put my bag? You? I like yeah. when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, where you put my bag? Daddy, yeah, I like when you oh, when you scrambling and scraping when you when you scrambling and scraping for shit. No. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna go over with that one. Make a wish. Just blow it out. Your birthday every day. Every day is a birthday on Drink Champs. God damn it. I'm in. Where I look look back on where I became. Did you miss me though? For real, because we. I'm saying it seems like a thing. I miss his birthday party, man. Man, I'm talking about for your birthday. Huh? Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I'm, I, yeah, we we party for my birthday before. You came to my party. And, and no, but me and you ain't never really party. You know what I'm saying? Eyes, mm. eyes. What is he talking about? <laughs> what is he talking about? Nah, but we just need to party by ourselves. You know what I mean? Like, you never came over to my house. You know where I got the three camera angle set up. You never come over. <laughs> And you know, take one of my drinks. You never had, you never had the ditty. You gotta come and get the. Ditty. Just very weird throughout that whole interview. It was throwing everybody off. And Fifty Cent later commented on that. He's like, "Did you guys see that?" He's like, "Is nobody seeing what I'm seeing right now?" Everybody's afraid to say it because Diddy's a very powerful person. And now that power structure seems to be tumbling. Seems like power structures are tumbling everywhere. People are getting a little more comfortable coming out with what they've known the whole time. This is a recording of Suge Knight giving Diddy a message for all the secrets that Diddy knows and how he should be careful. I tell you what, Puffy, your life is in danger because you know the secrets. Who's involved in that little secret room you guys participate in? So. You know they're gonna get you if they can. It's a little crazy how Puffy get booted out the alcohol business and Jimmy Ivan steps in with Andre and, and Snippy promoting it. It's never a good look when it comes to culture hip-hop and for our community and our people I turn myself in sometimes you gotta face the music that's most of the time perfect I'm gonna give you some real advice two quick things you gotta make a decision when you go to prison either you're gonna be Standing up pissing or squatting sitting down pissing. I advise you to try to take the first one. Cause you know if you squatting pissing on the seat, you know what that means. Oh yeah, by the way, do not do your time going by Brother Love. Brother Love is not a good code name for prison. <laughs> I didn't even listen to that clip before I showed it to you guys. <laughs> uh, if you don't know, Puff Daddy, he wanted to change his name to Diddy. And then later on, he was like, call me Brother Love. Don't even call me Diddy anymore. Call me Brother Love. I'm Brother Love because I love to spread love. And we all know what kind of love that was now, allegedly. And uh, the thing that he said at the beginning, though, he's like, you know the secrets. You know what these guys are all involved in, in that little secret room. And uh, they'll get you if they can. That to me seems like he's right. Because if all this is true 
And you do have a bunch of powerful people. He has not been arrested yet. But if they do take him in, and I think that's why he's like flying all over the place and making sure not to be around. If they do end up arresting him and he is in some kind of facility, I think it ends up the same way Epstein ended up. Now, there's a whole bunch of, you know, I'll, I'll say the way that the mainstream media painted Epstein, because after reading about Epstein and, and uh, Robert Maxwell, I don't even know if Epstein's really gone. But I will say that once you're in a place like that, it gets very dangerous potentially. So you guys let me know what you think in the comments. Again, subscribe, like, share. It helps tremendously. And other than that, I'm out.